What up, everybody? Instructa Beats back again here with our dividing fractions using common denominators lesson. Let's take a look at our objective today. All right, our objective today. Today, I will be able to divide fractions by finding common denominators. So here we have a problem we've done a couple different times in our different video lessons if you've been with us since the beginning of our dividing fractions unit. But we're not going to do keep change flip this time, but we are going to use another more efficient way to divide fractions. And uh, some of you might actually like this way better. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be finding common denominators first. So before we can find common denominators, we need to recognize that 4 is really a fraction, right? 4 over 1 or 4 divided by 1. So I'm going to show you kind of the shortcut and then I'll prove it to you with area models over here on the side. So actually, let me move all of this over. All right. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find um, a common denominator. And so you could use your pattern method. You could multiply it by a big one, whichever way you want to do it. Um, but my common denominator here is going to be 3. I'm going to rewrite this as 12 over 3 because that's the equivalent fraction for 4 over 1. I'm, I multiplied both the numerator and the denominator uh, by 3. And so I'm still going to divide this by 2 thirds. And when I do that, when I have a common denominator, you can actually just divide across. So uh, 3 divided by 3 would obviously be 1. 12 divided by 2 would be 6. So my answer is 6 over 1 or I could just write that as six holes. So four divided by two thirds is six. Now, one of the shortcuts they uh, teach you when they do this method, once you kind of understand what's happening, is that if your denominators are the same, you can kind of view 12 divided by two as a fraction. And if you just solve the numerator, that will be your answer, right? 12 divided by two was six, and I didn't even need to write the six over one, but I was just showing you what we're doing. Now, if you want to look at why this works, let me go ahead and draw four holes. And my denominator is three, so I need to split these into three equal groups. Now, once you have this common denominator, what you're trying to do is you're trying to figure out, okay, if I put two thirds in each group, how many groups can I make? And here I have one group. Okay, here would be my second group right here. Okay, I can kind of go across there. Here would be my third group. Here's my fourth group. And then I have my fifth group. Okay, I'll just do both those at the same time. And then obviously I would have my sixth group. So this is very much like dividing with area models. If you watch that lesson, we did uh, fractions and whole numbers divided by area models. But kind of the shortcut is if you don't want to draw out the area model, you can find a common denominator and then divide across. Let's take a look at a we do problem with an improper fraction. All right, and again, I moved it over because I'm going to prove it to you with the area model, although the whole point of this is that you don't have to draw area models. So the first thing you want to do with a mixed number is turn it into an improper fraction. So I'm going to use my shuffle here, right? You multiply, then add. I had one group of five, which is five, plus an extra four, which is nine fifths. And then I'm dividing that by two thirds. So if you did your pattern method, if you figured out your common denominator, um, and there's a multitude of different ways to do that, you would find out that my common denominator is 15. So 9 fifths is going to become 27 fifteenths, and I'm going to divide that by 10 fifteenths. And when you divide with using common denominators, right, you can just look right here at your numerators. And so your answer is going to be 27 tenths. Okay. Um, remember, if you divide across 15 divided by 15, is just one. So the shortcut they teach you is just to look at this numerator. Obviously, this is a um, improper fraction, so I can rewrite this as two holes and seven tenths. So when I divided one fourth divided by two thirds, I can make two holes and seven tenths. Let's take a look at what this looks like with an area model. So I'm going to start by drawing one in four fifths. So there's my two holes I'm going to use. And now I need to split this into my common denominator of 15. All right, so here I have two holes split into 15. Now, obviously, I had 15, and then I needed 12 of these, right? Um, and so actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase the last three. And then just like before, I'm trying to figure out, okay, how many groups of 10 fifteenths can I make, right? It was two-thirds, but when I found the equivalent fraction, it was 10 fifteenths. So how many groups of 10 fifteenths can I make out of my 27 fifteenths? So there's one group that's 10 pieces. They're all in my first group. Here's my second group. All right, there's my second group. All the twos were, um, were the next 10 that are my second group. And my last group, 
I only have seven pieces in my last group right here, right? So that's where I get my two holes from. I could um, fill out two complete groups of 10 fifteenths, right? Remember, I'm splitting these into each group having 10 fifteenths. That's what I'm thinking about division here as. Here would be my second group, and I have to come down here, right? So there's my second whole group. And then my leftover fractions, I obviously have seven of those. I just counted them. But my denominator is not 15. It's not how many I had in a whole. My denominator is how many do I have for each group? And I'm trying to make groups of 10. I have seven out of 10 that I would need to make the next group. Therefore, my mixed number is two and seven tenths. Obviously, you can see it's a little bit easier just to find the common denominators and divide across like I did. But this proves that this works. When you're finding common denominators, you're doing the exact same thing that we did with the area models. Let's take a look at a U-try problem. All right, so for this U-try problem, you do not need to uh, draw out the entire thing. Um, I will actually do that for you at the end, but really what we're focusing on, can you do the efficient way of just finding your common denominator and then dividing across? So push pause, try it out, push play, and let's see how you do. Your common denominators for the denominator of six and eight, you're gonna have to go all the way to 24. And so four six should have became four 24s. And you're dividing that by 15 24s, okay? And then again, your denominators are the same. So now you can just look right here at your numerators. And this is just like doing a division equation, right? When your dividend is smaller than your divisor, your answer is a fraction. So 4 24 divided by 15 24 would give us an answer of 4 15 okay? And so that's how you do that. You don't have to draw out the area models every time now, right? We've done that in a few different lessons. Now you get to use finding a common denominator. Hopefully this gives you another strategy you can use. Now you can draw them out with area models, you can do your keep change flip, or you can find common denominators and do it this way. Thank you so much for checking us out today. We really appreciate it. We know there's lots of different options online. We'd love for you to check out our Keep Change Flip video, all our other Dividing Fractions videos, and of, and of course, our Keep Change Flip song. We would love for you to subscribe, hit that like button, let us know where you're watching from. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out!